Whoa! I'm here to do something I think maybe only I can do as someone who has made a career out of character analysis. I am here to do a deep dissection of how the fucking bartender from New Jersey became such a big titty of a global movie star. <laughs> Because I feel, I feel if I had not distracted myself with obsession on the likes of De Niro and Hoffman and Daniel Day-Lewis, <laughs> things might have been very different. I'm now coming to realize my middle age. Um, if I had cracked the mystery of how you became a movie star, then maybe there still might be time for me to be more like you. I mean, if I... If I end up settling for three Academy Award nods and a, the respect of audiences and critics and my peers globally, I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to be happy about it. But the cold truth of it, the cold truth of it is that good reviews in The New Yorker and Oscar nominations that, that you lose to the fucking farmer's insurance pitchman J.K. Simmons. <laughs> they don't... Those things are great, but they don't buy you half of fucking Idaho, do they? No, they do not. They do not. It's not that I'm jealous, but Jesus, you get away with everything. I mean, can I cock my eye and say some cryptic shit that literally not one person in the room understands and have everyone laugh their asses off? I cannot. You think I'm, you think I, you're laughing because you think I'm making a joke. I was sitting at a bar with Bruce and I asked him if he liked the script I'd sent him, and he says, try keeping a marriage together when 22 is still on the menu. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? I mean, I know what it means, but why say it to that? I... But I fell off my bar stool laughing. I had no idea why. I still don't know what he thought of the script, and we're done making the movie. I don't think he's read it. Can I act that weird and have people love me? I cannot. Can I, can I say things like, the Me Too movement is ruining natural sexual dynamics while I'm wearing a Make America Great Again hat and then go blow up a helicopter of Mexican extras dressed up as Middle Eastern terrorists, call that a twofer, and still have a bunch of liberal Hollywood executives call my agent the next morning and say they want to be in the Edward Norton business? I most definitely cannot. I wish I was Teflon like you, but then again, I do like my kids not being embarrassed by me. Um, <laughs> but seriously, could I ever leave a movie set after my close-ups are done and leave every one of my co-stars for the last 30 years to act their scenes looking at a C-stand with a red X taped to it? <laughs> Listening to the 60-year-old script girl reading the John McClane lines to them? and still have directors like Quentin Tarantino call me? No, I act my fucking ass off. Quentin never calls me. <laughs> you know what I wouldn't give for the opportunity to tell that prick, I'm gonna rewrite this piece of shit tonight. <laughs> by the way, by the way, when Wes Anderson calls him, he and I do Moonrise Kingdom together, and this is true, everyone in the cast stayed in a little house together. We did our own costumes and makeup, we did our own hair, and we went to set in the van together to save money. Even Bill Murray, but not Bruce fucking Willis. <laughs> he rented the Carnegie Mansion next door like a boss. <laughs> when Wes said, do you think Bruce understands that I really want this to be like a, a repertory theater troupe? I said, shut the fuck up, you long-haired pussy. That's a fucking movie star. <laughs> It's not fair. It's not fair. I've got a claim, but I, I can't pull big cock movie star power moves like him and say, fuck the box office and fuck streaming services. I'm not making any more movies unless they go straight to DVD. <laughs> and keep that up for like, what, five years now? No way. If I pulled that, my ass would be out in the cold and they'd be calling Joseph Three Name Levitt for Fight Club 2. <laughs> I couldn't make Hudson Hawk and literally work ever again for a single day. 
Never. No one else would have survived that. You thrived. Why is this? Why? Why? We have to figure it out. Was it your training? No. You didn't go to candy ass acting class for training. You did mounds of cocaine and tended bar with your male ballerina pal, Steve Eads, and... I mean, what, what, what good is acting school anyway, you know? I mean, I think maybe, maybe it's your name, Bruce Willis. It pops. It's just an action hero. Mine still makes people think of Eddie Murphy sodomizing Art Carney. I don't know, maybe it's, I try to challenge myself. I look for roles that stretch me and are different. Whereas you deliver consistently the same performance. And I mean like the same one every fucking time. Maybe it's the script. I have to adopt your relationship to the script. I tried to be like you. I did a big action movie called The Incredible Hulk. You know what went wrong? I wanted a better script. I thought maybe we should try to make one Marvel movie that was at least as good as the worst Chris Nolan movie, but what the hell was I thinking? The last thing Bruce Willis would demand is a better script. I'm such an idiot. The script of his last three films was crinkle your forehead, say short, memorable quip, no more than four words, shoot the gun, duck, repeat the end. It's a half a page long. You could learn your lines in the car on the way to the set. You don't, but you could. <laughs> he doesn't have time for lines. He has to blow shit up. I'm so stupid. All my decisions have been wrong. I have to start going for scripts that are short and dumb, full of grunts, easily dubbed for the Bosnian market. <laughs> and then I could get a G5, a Caribbean island, seven daughters by three different women that I know of. At the end of the day, though, I've come to think, actually, it might just be all about your head, your, your incredible bald head. And frankly, I, I think it's because it closely resembles a nicely shaped cock. It's, <laughs> look at it, look at it, turn sideways. Look at it. And like a nicely shaped penis, nobody can stop looking at it. It's totally hypnotic to men and women alike. You, you have a perfect dickhead. And uh, men and women are both comfortable with it. They think it's funny, a little scary, a little sexy. Just that is a rare thing. It's a rare thing. And I know because I tried to emulate you in American History X. I shaved my head. I acted like a racist asshole. And um, it's probably the closest any actor has actually come to being you in a film. And I got nominated for Best Actor. But, but the movie made less money than you made on the opening weekend of Nobody's Fool. It's like, you got to work with Paul Newman, and all I got was my skinhead poster in the bathrooms of the gay clubs on Santa Monica Boulevard. I don't know. I think I have to accept it. I think I have to accept. I will never be the global dickhead powerhouse that you are. No matter how good I am, no matter how committed, no matter how professional, all those things take me further from your standard of stardom. There is nobody else like you, damn it. Nobody. Um, joking aside, I was doing a play many years ago in New York. And uh, I came home one night after the show, and there was a letter in my apartment building from the Four Seasons Hotel. And I read it, and it was one of the most thoughtful, articulate letters I got about this whole play. And it was signed Bruce Willis. And I immediately called my friend Stuart and said, fuck you, it's a wind up. And uh, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. So I called Bruce, I said, did you really write me this letter? He said, yeah. So we had a beer and um, he says, essentially, you're doing the kind of work I wanna be a part of and whatever you're doing, if you can put me in the mix, I'm in, sight unseen. And um, I didn't think that would really stick. And many years later, when I wanted to make my own film, real passion project, it's hard to get those things done, he was the first person I called, and he said, I told you, if you ever need me, I'm in. And uh, we just made this movie together and had a beautiful time. And I wouldn't have gotten it made without you. Uh, and I'm really deeply grateful for that. Um, I love you, or 
maybe I'm a very good actor and I'm just acting when I say that, you would... Um, you wouldn't know the difference and that's the reason I love you. Suscríbete. 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 Suscríbete al canal de Comedy Central.